Bry. Brian. Bry. All right. I guess he's not showing up today, but what's up, guys? Jim here from Drink a Beer Play a Game. And today, I am super excited because we are going to finally take a look at Hotel Mario on the Philips CDI. Derp! So, yeah, Jim gets to pick the damn games again. And, of course, he went with a shitty, terrible decision. I just... <laughs> it's not terrible. It got an 87 from Super Juegos Magazine. No! Nobody knows what that is. I agreed to play your terrible CDI game. Let's just get into it. Released in 1994, this was developed by Philips Fantasy Factory and published by Philips Interactive Media. It is a CDI exclusive. Ow! Of course it's an exclusive. Who else would want to put it on any system of any quality other than shitty-ass CDI? But Brian, if they remade it, it might be good. Ow! Alright, maybe I deserve that. But yeah, CDI exclusive, pretty infamous title. Is it as bad as people say? Yes. Yep, look, Bri, most reviewers don't play past the first or second level, and some poor saps made it all the way to the end, or they quit at the very end of level six, which I do not blame them. Still not worth it. All right, maybe not. The graphics. I will be fair with this game. I'm not going to be judging it too harshly, but this is probably the highlight of the game. There are a lot of really nice colors used throughout all the different levels, and the sprites and the enemies, they look like kind of a knockoff of Super Mario World. They're not identical, but they're similar enough, and that's a game I would most closely relate it to. You have seven different levels, and each one has roughly ten stages. You can have trees, castles, haunted mansions, ice levels, but each stage within the level is just minor aesthetic changes. There's nothing outwardly negative we can say, it just seems very simple even for the time. If I am going to dig into this game just a little bit, I gotta mention these goddamn cutscenes. Hey Jim, how in God's name are you going to sit here and try and defend these cutscenes? They're unique. You were unique in your grade school, did that help you get your friends? Well, Bri, it at least gets people talking. <laughs> they were talking, that's for sure. I just talked about the <laughs> So overall, there's not much to say because the levels are just a static image and you can move up and down the stages. But really, there's not much to talk about, so we gave it sixes. And that's the most fair score I can give this game. When it comes to beer, I'm starting off with two. One for the cutscenes, and one for Jim being so unique. I'm a unique boy. That's what your mama tells you. Damn it! The sound. <laughs> this can really... This is a love it or hate it kind of deal. Hate it! Don't you start. So, let's start with the music, and... Okay, this is really love it or hate it. Right. Well, Jim, do you like repetition? Maybe. Because you're the type that bitches when a song just keeps getting played on the radio over and over and over. It drives you crazy just a little bit, doesn't it, Jim? Maybe. So when you're going through ten stages and it's the same song over and over and you keep dying and that's all you hear, are you telling me that doesn't drive you a little bit crazy? No, it definitely does. And that's the biggest flaw with the music is they're not poorly composed. And for some weird goddamn reason on a CD-based console, this is in mono, but not even stereo, but besides that, yeah, the music is just, it's okay, but you just hear it over and over and over. And it doesn't even change for the boss fights, you just keep hearing it again and again and again, and it just drives you friggin' crazy by the end of it. The sound effects are alright. Now, the door sound effect, which is the main crux of the game, fuck! You're going to be hearing that ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk over and over again. Almost as much as you're going to hear the deaf sound, which you will also hear over and over and over again. But outside the jumping sound and every once in a while when you get a superstar or the flame mushroom, 
which you really don't get that much, the sound effects don't change up all that much. And the enemies really don't make sound effects on their own outside of flapping wings or maybe the bomb bombs explosions. So the sound effects are strangely limited. Maybe it's because I spent more time with it, but I guess it didn't, it almost becomes white noise by the end, especially when you're stuck on a level for like two goddamn hours. So it didn't make me not want to play the game. So it's the only reason why I gave it a six and Bri gave it a four. And when it comes to beer, I'm going to add three beers. One for the music repeating all the time, two for the door slamming sound, which just overtakes everything, and three for that damn death noise, which will haunt your nightmares. The control. <laughs> right? I'm going to give my points, and then we'll let the fans determine how wrong you are. Is that fair to say, Jim? Uh-oh. So, how do you take a game that is basically about closing doors and make it complicated? And let's go one step further. It's a Super Mario game. So any person who's ever played Super Mario game knows you have a D-pad and you have B and A. B runs, A jumps. This game decides let's reverse those controls and they don't have B and A, they have one and two and one jumps and two runs. So right off the bat, it feels unnatural as you're playing. So there's strike number one. Strike number two is Mario games traditionally have that momentum system that forces it to feel uh, just a little bit slippery. This game just adds like all kinds of lubrication all over the place and you feel like you can't stop or you slip all the time and you get a lot of unnecessary deaths because of the way the game feels. Add on top of that, how hard could it be to, to close a door? Now, granted, you only have to hit one button to do it, but you have the option to go into doors, which you have to hit the up on the D-pad, and then you have to hit down to get out. That minor nuisance can literally cost you deaths later in the game because it feels unnatural once again, and maybe if you put 8 to 10 hours, you're going to master it, and it's not a big deal because you'll be like Jim, and you're used to terrible things. Yeah, real gamers. Rise up. To me, that is a mark of a shitty control scheme mixed in with the fact that you have preconceived notions of how you're supposed to play the game because you're using a franchise that's very well developed at this point. So, when it comes to scores, I gave it a 4. Jim, dick sucking this game off, gave it a 6. Look, you get used to it. It's not great, and what you forgot to mention is to shoot the flowers, you have to hit 1 and 2 at the same time. Which, Which is even worse. True, but if you have a controller with the three button on it, it's not as bad. And what is the standard controller with the CDI, Jim? Well, the one that comes with Brian is the infrared one with the weird stick in the middle. So basically what you're saying is just like the Sega Genesis, Don't. it comes with an inferior thing that you Don't. need to get a third party controller in order to even play the game, which justifies the fact that I said this control is not good. And you said it's above average. Do you see why you make terrible decisions, Jim? You get used to it. That's what people with herpes say, Jim. But guess what? Does anyone want to mess around with those people? What if they're hot? Ow! Scumbag! I'm sorry. Stop justifying this terrible decision you keep making. Brian, I can justify anything. So I'm adding three beers. One for fucking up the most classic control scheme that every gamer knows to this point. Two for that annoying going in and out doors, and three for Jim's herpes. Hey! Ooh, Lord, the gameplay. All right, so, as most people know, and if you don't know at this point, the main crux of the game is going from hotel to hotel, closing doors. So, the way you beat every stage is you close all those doors in a the level. There's enemies in the level that will infinitely respawn for the most part, so. If you close all the doors, it'll actually kill all the enemies on the screen and you can get some more points out of that. There's strategy to be found here because you do have to go into doors that are already closed when you start. And that's how you can trigger certain events like more coins to come out. So when you get 50 coins, you get an extra life. It kind of matters, but it really doesn't. Doesn't do matter. That. Okay, it doesn't matter because you have infinite continues. Score also really does not matter. But this game does not matter. Don't you dare. So you do get the classic power-ups of the mushroom and the flower. So the mushroom doesn't make you bigger, it makes you blink. And 
what it does is like it always does. It gives you one extra hit to take, which is so clutch in a lot of situations. But if you can, you really need to get that flower because it just makes life so much easier. Here's where I will give this game a lot of credit. The game, no, Bri, hear me out. The game actually does a really good job of weaning you into its mechanics. In the first level, you're just going through floors, going up and down elevators, closing doors. You have to deal with the completely bullshitty enemy AI and the random placements that come with it. But it's still relatively simple. When you get to the boss of the first stage, that's when you learn about the elevators switching which direction they go. And when you hear this ding sound, you'll be living off this ding. So, as later levels go on, you have different gimmicks in every level. One level will go randomly dark, one will be slippery, one will have little coins that you can turn back into actual coins that won't kill you. There's different gimmicks for every level going forward, and it's just got such an up and down difficulty curve. But as you go on f through the game, where it gets really devious, is eventually it doesn't tell you the direction that it changes to. So you have to remember in your mind, every time it dings, what used to be the doors and what they turn into. Then after that, it'll change what floor you go to. So you have to remember that this door will put you three doors up and then this one will put you two doors down. So then you have to juggle that. Then after that, you have to deal with it going to not even showing you anymore if the elevators are going up and down. So you have to remember what three levels away it goes, what direction it's going, when it changes back and forth. And after that, it makes you clear two floors per stage. So if you memorize the first floor and you go to the second floor and you die there, you gotta go back to the first floor and do it all over again until you learn it. And that applies to boss fights as well. And so you're just going through the game again and again and again. Thank God there's a level select sheet. And where this game screws up something else fundamental is if you want to level select to the last level, it doesn't put you at the first stage, it puts you right at the boss fight. So for the purpose of this gameplay capture, I couldn't even capture the footage of the final level before Bowser because it just put me to Bowser, which after playing all this game, I really wasn't complaining about. So this game builds on itself, but the fundamental flaws of just the random enemies, the random items, the randomness, and just the overall difficulty, the unfair spawning of people right before you're about to end a level. The fact that you can lose if you run out of time. The fact that you can lose if they open up all the doors. The fact that enemies can just spawn instantly and just randomly kill you. The fact that bosses can just eat you when you're trying to run away from them. There's just so much goddamn bullshit here that eventually you have to memorize every single level down to a particular pattern to have any chance of getting out of them. And that's where any kind of semblance of fun goes right out the window. So Jim, let me get this straight. A boring ass game that's about closing doors has really stupid challenges added on top of that that you, per your own words, just said isn't fun because it becomes a memorization game is on a really obscure system that no one played and you have to pay top dollar to play? Sounds like the gameplay isn't any fun, Jim. Look, Bri, if you're a puzzle fan who wants a challenge, this is your game. Then you ain't buying a CDI this to play one shitty game. Maybe this is the Dark Souls of puzzle-based games. How about it's that? Not. It's not. It's just not. When it comes to scores, Brian gave it a 3 and I gave it a 5. You will hit a certain point where there will be fun, but then the game just rips that fun away from you and shoves it up your butt. And when it comes to beer, we're already drinking way too much, so I'm just going to add two beers. One happy beer for its somehow natural progression of its gimmicks, and another sad beer for it totally making your life hell. The originality. <laughs> oh. All right. You would think on paper maybe this is an original idea. And I'll give it credit. Who would have thought of making an entire game based around closing and opening doors? I don't think there's been anything since, but we'll give it game points for there. Everything else, it's a puzzle game. Like Jim mentioned, environmental issues, enemies that track you, memorization, it's all things we've seen time and time again. It just coats itself as trying to be original in a game that's about closing doors. So I was only willing to give it points for those doors opening and closing and that general concept of doing it in a hotel. Jim, on the other hand, just like he did with gameplay and everything else, just because he's still butthurt about how much he spent on this game, no. decided to give this game more points than it deserves. 
So, when it comes to score... Right, this is an experience that you will not get in a Mario game anywhere else. And you shouldn't get it, because it's not even original. So, I gave it a 3, Jim gave it a 5, and you know what? I'm going balls crazy. For beer, I'm adding 5 beers. For the score, Jim can't seem to go below, because this game deserves much lower. But for Jim's sake, he knows he ties his opinions to his dollar. And he could not justifiably Incorrect. lower this game. I put love and time and attention. It's like a bad child. That's what this game is. It's basically the same things you said about Superman 64, Jim. You, I liked the rings. You defend the worst. I liked the rings. So. This is a whole game of rings. Enjoy those beers. All right. So when it comes to replayability. Honestly, where the replayability is truly going to come from is the fact that you will be playing these levels over and over again until you trudge your way through them. It's a perseverance game. Now, normally on this page, and this might be the first time we ever break this, there is a two-player mode, but it's just like the classic Mario's where you're taking turns, so it's not really like you're playing at the same time or truly playing against each other. It's just making the hell last longer. So... With that being said, we gave it threes. For the most part, the only replayability you're really going to do is maybe trying to find where all the gimmick switches are and those secret doors to turn them off from level to level, but even then it's not really worth it. And when it comes to beer, I'll add two beers for two players. Why not? So, overall... Ow. The game is bad. It's not that bad. It's below average, at best. I can give you that. Um, as we said throughout the review, it just... It, it, it feels like someone who knocked off a Mario game and tried to use the controls and tried to do things, but didn't quite execute it that well. It was very repetitive. The soundtrack certainly got annoying because when you go through multiple stages and it's the same thing over and over, there's just a lot of things that annoyed the shit out of me. Yeah, the biggest ugh, biggest problem with the game is the fact that it just gets to the point where it's unplayable without memorization after a while. And I'm talking very late in the game here, but it's still a problem where it isn't so much a game anymore, it's just a test of your memorization and your perseverance. So, I really, it's one of those weird, it's a thing that happens a lot with the CDI, where it's a game that's from something or about something and has a cool concept behind it, but terrible execution. And this kind of falls into that trap. Is this another obvious reason why nobody did the CDI? I mean, the Netherlands love the CDI. And where are they at now? I don't know, they're enjoying hot European women. Exactly. So they, they win? Because they're not playing video games because CDI ruined them on video games. So I win. Do you want to see what I did there? I mean, that's a bit of a stretch when it's, <laughs> when it's hot European women here, but... Yeah, I mean, look, it's a game that's fun in small doses and... Very small doses. Very small doses. And it really takes... But it's also a catch-22 because you have to take the time to learn the quirks of the game to get through it. So... Or just never play it, and I promise you're not missing much. Please, for the love of God, just emulate it. Yes. Just emulate Don't it. Don't be Jim. Right, hand it. Give it to me. Do not be me. Do not be mentally ill. Do not buy a complete in a box. You even have the goddamn sleeve. I want to burn that sleeve. Do not burn. It's precious. So anyway. I love it. When it comes to scores, I gave it a four. Jim gave it a five. I was clearly more fair. I'm sure most of you probably thought I was only going to give it a one or two. On a technical level, it's playable. It's just annoyingly repetitive. It's not really fun. The first couple stages, you might say, ah, they're not bad, but it just it just wears out welcome way too fast. So, when we combine all of our scores together, it rounds out to a 4.6. Like I said, below average, just barely playable, but I mean, I mean, if we were grading this on price, it would be a one because it is not worth no. the dollar at all. It's not worth the price, but this is still the cheapest Nintendo game on the CDI. So that tells you something. That's true. So with that, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you never get this game. Jim was wrong again. In theory. Cheers. Cheers. When it comes to beer pairing, I decided to go with one of the worst beers I could think of. And that is, of course, 
Bud Select 55. This is a low calorie option to an already light beer, so you basically get no flavor. It's a perfect pairing for a game like this, and considering the fact we're telling you guys you're gonna need a whole lot to enjoy yourself, I guess this is a good option if you're like Jim and wanna watch your calories. Either way, if you're silly enough to play this game, you might as well get a terrible beer to go with it and complete the process. But remember to drink your beers and play your games responsibly. As always guys, thanks for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave some comments, or better yet, why not subscribe? Till next time guys, cheers.